Good day, grade 11. So welcome to this new lesson on physical science. Um, and welcome to all of you that have joined the To Enable platform. I'd really like to urge that you join us on the To Enable platform and also the grade 11 physical science class. The most important reason why I would like you to join the physical a science grade 11 class is that you can message me so you can give me some idea of what you guys want to study what you need help with which sections if there are exam questions from certain sections that you need to that you're struggling with i would like to be able to make this as interactive as possible in the meantime and until we get all the people together i am going to continue working through vectors and forces if you guys have missed any of the previous lessons, feel free to go and click on the links. There, there is a recording of every lesson. So if you click on the link, you will get to see the recording. And also if you miss anything here, or if I spoke too fast, or if you need to watch it again, please just go through to the same point where you clicked on the link to get to this video, and you will find it again. You can find a recording of it. Right, so now, we started doing this on the last lesson and I feel that I really want to go through it again um, and then we can move on to another example and then we can talk about forces. Now the triangle law, it's called the triangle law of forces but it works whether it's a force or a any type of vector, displacement, um, anything like that or velocity. Basically, if you've got any three vectors acting at a point so that they were in equilibrium, then they can be represented by a triangle, a closed triangle, and then we can calculate the size of the vectors. So it's typically used in a force diagram. Okay, so let me show you as an example. I think it's the easiest if you get an idea from an example. We have an object of mass two kilograms and it's suspended from a light string. So here is the light string. Okay. A second string is attached to the first at point P and then the person is pulling it. There is a person that's pulling this string at point P and they're pulling it with a horizontal force until it makes an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal. And it says calculate this force here. That's what they want. So what's important is a couple of things. The most important thing is that this object of the mass two kilograms is suspended and nowhere does it say it's moving. And if it's not moving, it means that it's in equilibrium, which means the net force is equal to zero. If there's no acceleration, if all the forces are in equilibrium, the net force is zero, which means we can take these three forces and we can draw them in a closed triangle. And then we can use that triangle to determine the sizes of the forces or the angles or whatever. So let's do that. And the first force I always draw, if it's available to me, is the weight. And that's this force straight down. And that is the weight of this object. Okay, so that is that there, which I'm going to say is the weight of the object, okay? Then remember, if it's in equilibrium and there's no net force, it means there is no resultant, which means that all the forces and all the vectors are going to be drawn head to tail, or depending on your teacher and your textbook, tail to head. Okay, it doesn't matter which way you say it, as long as you realize that it means the same thing, that there is no resultant, okay? So the next force that I'm gonna draw is the one that goes straight across, okay? And then finally, I'm going to join the join this triangle, complete the triangle by joining this up here, okay? So this is force F, okay? This is T, and this would be point P, which we don't really need to know, okay? Now, we need to fill in a couple of things. The most important thing that we need to fill in first off is to identify where this angle fits into this triangle, okay? So, if you look carefully, you can see that this is three degrees with a horizontal, which means that this is 30 degrees, okay? 
and that is outside the triangle, so it's of no use to me. I need it inside the triangle. So what I want you to look at is to see if you can see any parallel lines and anything that we can use like that. And if you look carefully, you can see that this is horizontal. I told you, it says it's making 30 degrees with the horizontal. Also, F is applied horizontally. Okay, so F is horizontal. So do you agree that these two lines are actually parallel? And that means that we have alternate angles, which means this angle here is 30 degrees as well. Okay, it's quite nice. We also know that this, the weight, is always straight down to the center of the earth. And we were told that this is horizontal, so therefore that is 90 degrees. This isn't that pretty because now we've got a right angle triangle. And because we've got a right angle triangle, we can use Sarkatoa. I know that some of you get excited and you use also sine A over A equals sine B over B or vice versa. I'm very happy with you guys using the sign rule. I'm going to be using Sakatoa, but if you ever feel that you really need to see this example done using the sign rule, let me know and I will do an example with the sign rule. It makes a difference which way you do it. It's both are correct. Okay, there's one other value we can fill in here before we can apply the Sakatoa and that is the weight. We know that it's got a mass of two kilograms but the weight is always mass times acceleration due to gravity. And this acceleration due to gravity is 9.8. Okay, it averages out at 9.8 meters per second squared. So this weight is going to be 2 times 9.8, which works out to 19.6 newtons. So that's the size of the vertical force star. And what did they want? They wanted this. Okay, so let's change color again. You guys obviously don't have to change color every time. It's just easier for me to show you what's going on. We have the following information. We've got that this angle here is 30 degrees. We have that that's 90 and we have this side here. And we want this F. So if we consider the 30 degrees, do you agree that this side here, the weight side, is the opposite side? So we have the opposite sides. We want the adjacent side to the 30 degrees, so we want the adjacent. So do you agree we're going to be using tan? So we can say tan of 30 degrees is equal to the opposite side, which is 19,6 over the adjacent side of F. Therefore, we can say F, and I'm taking it slowly, tan 30 degrees, is equal to 19,6. Therefore, F is equal to 19,6 divided by tan 30 degrees, tan 30. And now we need our calculator, so let's get that out. There we go. Right, now we're going to use our fraction notation and we're going to go 19.6. And then we're going to go down and we're going to say tan of 30. And again, just have a second, delete 30. And again, I'd really like to stress that you check on your calculator that there is not, that there is a capital D on the screen, or at least that there's no R on the screen. Okay, because R stands for radians, and that's a whole different way of measuring around the points around the campus or the degrees. It's not a degrees, it's a radian. And if you have that, you will get it wrong. Now, most Sharp and Casio calculators, if they happen to have got that big R, it's easy to just reset it at the back. There's a little button which you can press with the sharp pointy end of a pen or of a paper clip. Okay, and you can press the reset button and then there should be that capital D. Otherwise, you can just go into mode and change it so that it has just got degrees 
Okay, because if you don't have degrees and you have the radians, you're going to get the wrong answer. Oopsie, and now I've just deleted that after all my chatting. So let's just quickly do that again. 0.6 all over tan of 30, close bracket, own, and equals. And we get this answer. And remember grade 11, you're in science, not maths. So that is no use to me. If I said to you, okay, the force is 98 root 3 over 5, you'd probably beat me up because that means nothing to you. You need to press the SD button and look. Oh, look, yes, the force is 33,95 newtons. Remember, you're always running off to two decimal places. So it's 33,95. So F is 33,95 newtons. And please note as well, this is a comma, not a point, okay? If you're in the IEB system, they are very, very strict about that, okay? It's comma, not point. So 33,95 newtons, and that's the answer to this question. Then we just need to check one more thing. They've asked you for the magnitude of the force. So if that's the case, they're not expecting you to give a direction because they've just asked you for the size. So you are correct with your answer and you can move on. Right, now we've got this picture here, okay? It says, the diagram below shows a rope and a pulley arrangement of a device being used to lift an 800, and we're going to keep it at Newton's, an 800 Newton object. Assume that the ropes are light and inextensible, and also the the pulley is light and frictionless. So why is that important? Well, because then they don't actually take part in affecting the forces. If the ropes were heavy or were stretchy or there was lots of friction, then this would not be able to be solved using this triangle law of forces, okay? Because there'd be extra forces that would be, and there would be a net force, okay? So now it says, determine the magnitudes of tensions T1 and T2. Right, so we've got T1 going off here and we've got T2 going off here. But what's important to realize is that these are joined, okay? Which means the force over here of T2 is actually also the force in this piece of the string here. So that force there is T2. And the, similarly, this force here, let me change color. This force here up here is the same as the force that's experienced here and that's T1, okay. So now we know that we've got those forces. Now they're saying ca calculate or determine the magnitude of these tensions. Now remember the tension, by the way, is just another word or phrase for force in a string or cable or anything like that. So basically they just want the size of the forces. So in order to work that out, we need to draw a triangle of forces, right? So let's do that. And again, I am going to draw a triangle and I'm gonna start as I always do with a force down due to gravity. So I'm gonna go, there we go. That there is my 800 Newtons. Okay, and that is my force due to gravity. Now, we have a force T1 that goes up to the right and a force T2 that goes up to the left. And remember what I said to you, these forces are in equilibrium. So they always have to be drawn head to tail, head to tail, all the other way around, tail to head, tail to head. But they cannot have, you cannot have this. Um, you don't have that. That is a resultant, and there is no resultant in this type of question because nothing is moving. If you have a resultant, it means that there has been a net force, which means that something has moved. Okay, so we can draw this up like that, and that would be T1, and then we could draw that there, and this would be T2. Now, if you presented a diagram like this to me in the exams, I would mark you down. I would give you very bad marks to your diagram. And why is that? Well, because first of all, you were supposed to have used a pencil. Okay. Secondly, you were supposed to have used a ruler. Okay. And if you went over the sides or whatever, you would have to have used an eraser to 
fix it, okay? So unfortunately, my software doesn't allow me to use a facility of a ruler or a snap too. So therefore, my drawings are a little bit rougher than they should be. But you guys have got no excuses. We want pencils, ruler, erasers. And listen, this pencil must be sharp, okay? It mustn't be so blunt that I can't really tell where your line is because that's how thick your line is. That's ridiculous, okay? Nice, sharp pencil. Right, so now we've got that this is T1 and this is T2. Now, this angle here is 130 degrees, okay? Which means that we're saying that that angle there is 130 degrees. Now, you do not have to measure that angle when you are drawing your picture. You can if you want to, if you really want to, but remember that this is supposed to be a sketch, okay? So what we're doing is we're just writing down how much it is. It's going to be an approximate figure, but we're gonna use that to calculate some other angles in the triangle. So, we, do you agree? Wait, let me just change color again. that this here is a straight line. So if this is 130 degrees, right, all the degrees on this is 180 degrees for the straight line. So if this is 50 degrees, because 50 plus 130 makes 80. Okay. Now we've got T2. Okay, but T2, we have to again draw our little line like this. Okay. T2 makes 140 degrees, 140 degrees this way. So this whole thing here, from here, around there, that is 140 degrees, okay? But do you agree that using alternate angles, wait, I'm gonna just get another color because I can't hardly see this one, horrible blue. I mean, it's pretty blue, but it doesn't help me. Do you agree that this is alternate? So therefore, that angle there is 50 degrees. So if that is 50 degrees and the whole of this is 140, do you agree that that there is 90 degrees? Okay, because 140 minus 50 equals 90 degrees. So there, that angle between T1 and T2 is 90 degrees. And then finally, if that's 90 and that's 50, that is 40 degrees. So again, we've got a pretty right angle triangle where we've got a 50, a 90, a 40, and we want T1 and we want T2. And this is obviously the hypotenuse because it is opposite the angle. I mean, opposite the right angle. Right, so again, because we've got a right angle triangle, I'm going to use Sarka Toa. And I'm going to start off working at T1, which is this line here. Okay. And I'm going to use the 50 degrees simply because we worked it out first. So if this is the angle I'm looking at, and this is the hypotenuse, so we have hypotenuse, tick, tick. Do you agree that the side next to it would be the adjacent side? And that's what we want. We want T1, which is the adjacent. So therefore, we're going to use cos. So we're going to say, right, cos of 50 degrees equals the adjacent, which is T1, over the hypotenuse, which is 800. Therefore, we can say 800 cos of 50 degrees equals T1. And now we need our calculators. Let's get them out. Okay, so we can go 800 multiplied by cos of 50 degrees, a close bracket, equals, so that becomes 514.23, 514.23 newtons. So it's 514,23 newtons, and that is T1. Now we need to work out T2. Now, some of you might go, well, this is a right angle triangle and we've got the hypotenuse and we've got one side. So why don't we just use Pythagoras to get T2? And you can, there's nothing wrong with doing that. However, I do worry that say, for example, you've made a silly mistake. Let's say that you have by mistake incorrectly calculated T1. Then, if you use T1 in working on T2, you get a compounded error because now your 
T2 is dependent on this T1, which is wrong, okay? So I would suggest that you go back to basics. You use the stuff that you were given and work on T2 without we're using the T1 if you can. So let's do that. With this time we've got T2, we're still using the 50 degrees. So this time we've got the opposite. We've got the hypotenuse, so we're going to be using sine. So I can say 